We'll now dress up the clue corner with a leather patch. This will also help prevent chafe. At the corner assembly here at the clue, we're going to create a triangular butterfly leather patch for shafe protection. So we're just tracing it around the edge of the sail. We'll cut out half of the butterfly patch, fold it in half, trace the other side, and cut that side out as well. We'll then feed that leather patch through the ring and then we'll hand sew this to the corner of the sail. We're going to put the rubber cutting pad on the back side. You could use an awl or a nail to pre-punch holes to make it easier for your hand sewing. You probably won't have a tool like this. Uh, uh, this is typically only found in loft situations. This kind of speeds up our process. If you use an awl or a, a nail, then just place the holes approximately a quarter inch apart. This makes it a little bit easier for hand sewing as you don't have to punch the needle through all this thickness. As you can see in the video, the leather patch is a little bit big. We'll trim it later. You could also use an awl. That's what Deb is demonstrating there. Then we'll take our pre-wax twine and our hand needle that's included in the kit and we'll feed it through the eye of the needle and create a knot at the end. Then we'll feed it through these pre-punched holes along the edge of the leather patch. I like to use a palm. Deb does not. Deb will you typically use needle nose pliers to pull the needle through the assembly. Using a sailmaker's palm, in my opinion, is a lot easier. She feeds it through to the knot and then starts her second stitch and she'll usually tuck the tail uh, in her second stitch coming back from the back side. You'll see that later on. So she just continues to pull it taunt as she feeds it through each one of those pre-punched holes. Obviously the first stitch across this end will only have one stitch per hole going the opposite direction. When you get to the opposite end, we'll complete the missing stitch along the edge. We're going to skip forward and skip a lot of film here just to speed up this process. This uh, task is rather laborious, but it's a lot of fun and it creates a beautiful leather patch assembly. As you can see, we're going the opposite direction now, filling in those missing stitches. We'll skip forward to the end of this uh, row of stitches, and you'll see what Deb does to finish up the edges of this leather assembly. Okay, and what I do is I just go back through one of these holes. So that I can start sewing up the edge. But first you want to trim that off so that it's even with the sail edge. There are no hard and fast rules here, but I like to have it a little bit away from the edge by about a sixteenth of an inch. That's just my preference. Once our edges are cut, a little bit short of the edge of the sail is best. Uh, not by much, by a sixteenth of an inch or so, we're going to create a baseball stitch up both edges. And you can see how Deb accomplishes it here. Basically, feeds the needle uh, through the inside each time. So right through the inside, punch through about a quarter inch away, and then on the other side through the inside about a quarter inch away from that uh, previous stitch on that side. And that seals up the edge, creating a gorgeous leather patch assembly. Okay, we'll do that all the way up there to the ring. We'll skip a little bit ahead here. And now we are very close to the ring. We've completed the stitches all the way up to that point. We call this a baseball stitch. Now you can either bury your threads 
here in previous stitching and uh, then start it on the other side or you can go through the assembly as Deb's going to do here next. She's going to just feed that thread all the way through the leather patch there at the fold. Okay, now I just go underneath here to the other side. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but it can be done. There's the needle coming out the other side. And then she'll repeat that process for the opposite side. Need the needle nose here because it's stuck. There we go. Or you Hold can knot it there if time. you want and start another piece of thread. And we'll not show this whole process. We'll skip ahead. You've got the idea, I believe and we'll show you what to do at the end. Here we are at the end, finally done with all of our stitching. You can either bury the thread between uh, your previous stitches or you can tie a knot. Anything that keeps the thread from coming undone is all you want to do. So Deb's going to kind of bury it into the corner here. And then she's going to create a knot, and then she's going to touch that knot with a hot knife or a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. And that'll create a beautiful button. Because this is pre wax twine, so it actually will lay kind of flat when she touches it with a hot knife. You'll see that next. Looks great, doesn't it? Now here we'll do the other side. Same procedure. And now we're done.